This is the Star Wars theme song being played by a high voltage arc. There is no speakers here. In this video I'm going to explain the science behind this and I'll show you how I made it. This is an ignition coil from your car. Well not your car, specifically my neighbor's car. So the ignition coil is responsible for starting that combustion process between the air and the fuel mixture that's inside the cylinder inside your engine block. And I'll probably do another video another time just discussing the mechanics of an engine. The ignition coil has probably always been one of the most fascinating, fun, and interesting parts of a car to me. It generates a high voltage arc. Now that arc actually can kill you. So uh, I'd make sure that if you're ever working on a car and it's running, just be careful. Um, you never want to have this jump through you. I've had it happen to me before it hurts and it, it actually is possible for it to, to, to stop your heart if it zaps the wrong spot. So, you know what? I actually suggest just uh, subscribing to my channel. That way, you know, if you ever have the itch that needs to be scratched when it comes to high voltage stuff, then uh, I, can, I can do that for you, if you know what I'm saying, by subscribing you subscribing to my channel, what I'm saying. So to break down how this works, let's just start with a little bit of theory. So anytime you pass current through a coil of wire, you generate an electromagnetic field. So we can demonstrate this by energizing a coil, putting it near a nail or a bolt, and watching as it gets pulled up into the magnetic field that's generated. And it'll hold it there until the power source is disconnected and that magnetic field collapses and the bolt or nail will fall out of the magnetic field. So I want you to think of this wire as having a whole bunch of electrons in it. Anytime we move a magnetic field across a wire, we're going to have flow of electrons. And you can think of these electrons as a bunch of little magnets. And as I move the magnetic field across the wire, these little magnets move with it. So that, while it's not a scientific definition of how electromagnetism affects the flow of electrons, it's just a simple way of thinking about it. And with electron flow through a wire, it, it's electricity. That, that's what electricity is, is electron flow through a circuit. So now let's attach the magnets to something that rotates. Let's place a set of coils in the middle. A good example of this is just going to be a DC motor. DC motors have permanent magnets in them as well as a little coil in there. And it essentially just uses electromagnetism to make it rotate. Uh, I'll make another video more details about rotating magnetic fields another time. But for now, uh, the idea I just want you to take away from this is that anytime we have a magnetic field that rotates or moves past a wire or a coil of wires, it's going to make electron flow occur in that coil and you're going to generate electricity. That's the biggest takeaway I need you to remember here because that's going to be fundamental for what's coming up next. But what does that have to do with an ignition coil? And the answer to that lies in the electromagnetic field that's generated. How an ignition coil achieves its high voltage is by having two sets of windings with different number of turns. For this example, we'll say there's 10 turns in this coil. The first coil will always have less turns than the second one. And this first coil we'll just call our primary coil. So the second coil will always have more windings. And let's say for this example, it's got about a thousand turns. Uh, this will be known as our secondary coil, and it's going to give us our high voltage arc. Now, here's how it actually works. You apply current flow to the primary windings. That primary winding will create that same electromagnet we saw before with the bolt. So it's going to create electromagnetic field. When that power is removed from that electromagnetic field, that field will collapse. As that field collapses, that magnetic field is cutting across the secondary windings, and it's going to force electron flow in the secondary coil. And because there's more windings in the secondary coil than the primary, there's more, there's more little coils that are going to be pushing that electron flow. And there's going to be more voltage generated because of it. So theoretically, in a perfect world, if we had 10 windings on a primary and 1,000 windings on a secondary, uh, we would have about 100 times more voltage outputted than we did inputted. So one thing I will add is that a typical ignition coil, it will have hundreds of windings on its primary and probably thousands on its secondary. So the actual output voltage of an ignition coil will change based on how it's made and how much input voltage you put into it. This is a very bare bones overview of how this works. There's a lot of electrical theory I left out. Uh, I, all I'm trying to do is give you a basic understanding of how this thing functions. Um, I will also add that an ignition coil does not give you free energy. More voltage does not mean more power. In fact, you're always gonna have losses just due to heat and other inefficiencies. So technically you're actually gonna lose more energy than you get out. You will get more voltage out than you put in and I will explore that probably in another video. I want to make 
an ignition coil plays in music. Because, just because this can be cool. A sound wave is essentially a wave that travels through the air at a, as a frequency. Our ears pick up that frequency and we translate it as noise in our brain. So if we use a speaker to generate sound, they use electromagnets to do that. What? The speakers function by putting a changing or oscillating um, signal to the speaker windings and that will create these this little uh, electromagnetic field that's always changing and that will pull on the speaker and that will cause the vibration to go through the air. That's how a speaker works. So I'm just going to connect my ignition coil to an amplifier from a car and I'm just going to make it make the noise for me because essentially when that high voltage arc shoots through the air, it generates a lot of heat which creates these little pulses. It, it should function the same as a speaker. Every time that little lightning bolt shoots out of there, it should give you an audible noise. So if I run it at the same frequency that a speaker is intended to run at, then realistically that this this should work just like a speaker. It's just a lot cooler and a lot more dangerous. So I've zapped myself before more than once and I know what it feels like to get zapped by this thing. And also it is possible that uh, you get a little bit of high voltage that can shoot back and destroy some of the driving circuit that you have. So if I connect an ignition coil directly to my amplifier, it, there's a good chance I'll end up probably destroying the channel that it's connected to. And I know that because I have a channel that's destroyed on my amplifier. So I've designed a circuit that sits in between the ignition coil and the amplifier. And essentially what it's going to do is it's going to scrub out any high voltage spikes that can occur along the way. Um, I wouldn't recommend doing this home. As I said, I just subscribed to my channel so you can see me do this kind of crazy stuff. So the circuit that I made for it involves a capacitor, some diodes, a transistor, and a couple other little components. Uh, and essentially just what it does is it just scrubs out some of that high voltage and protects the amplifier uh, from high voltage spike shooting back and causing damage to the internal components. So I'm going to give you a quick walkthrough of everything involved with that. And uh, yeah, I will play you some tunes. Um, I have a 12 volt battery. Which tunes are going to be connected through a cable right to the amplifier. I have a couple diodes and a resistor. Essentially, that's just something that would help prevent the high voltage spikes from getting back to the uh, amplifier there. I have the control circuit for the high voltage side of things. Now, this is going to consist of some uh, of my transistor as well as, a again, a couple more diodes. And, and the diodes here are actually to prevent uh, negative voltage spikes. And um, I won't go too far into that right now, but I have my ignition coil right here. We will... Uh, play some tunes and have a good time. Maybe I'll cook a Pokemon card because that's what I do. Yeah, let me go. Hopefully I don't zap myself. So at first the setup worked really good, but I ran into a couple issues of the sound quality and it just kind of started sparking. So I tried to do a bit of troubleshooting. Uh, did a little bit of rewiring off camera, then uh, started to try it up again, and I ran into some more problems. Ooh. So I kind of decided I needed cool. to just take the whole thing back to the drawing board and just sort of redesign the way I was going to do it. Hey Google, turn on ventilation. So uh, I figure instead of using my amplifier that is intended to just output directly to a speaker, uh, I would actually build a much better control side circuit and I would use something that I could buy at the dollar store to control it and I figured it would be best to be able to control this wirelessly. So I took a Bluetooth speaker and I removed the internals. I designed a circuit that would allow the control of some transistors without causing damage or too much interference on the Bluetooth side of things. Then after a little bit of trial and error, I got it working real good. And now the only thing I really got left to do is just improve my design and maybe add an enclosure just so I can have some environmental control of the area where the arc's jumping. Oh, yeah. Initially I was having a few issues trying to get that arc to go across from one side to the other. Now the air that is all around us all the time, it has some resistance to it. So the resistance would be defined as something that uh, impedes the flow of electricity. So a wire has very low resistance, easy for electrons to flow from one spot to the other. Um, the air, not 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 so great for electricity flow it's got a fair amount of resistance but there's other gases that have a much lower resistance to the flow of electricity uh, one of those being neon you probably heard of the term like a neon sign before that's because in those tubes you have neon gas so another gas that we can use and is actually pretty easy to get is helium so i'm going to take some helium from this balloon and i'm going to inject it into here with a tube 
that goes inside of that glass chamber there, my arc chamber. And what it's going to do is it's going to fill that chamber up with helium and it's going to lower the resistance and the arc should have an easier time passing from one point to the next. So i got to play in. It's not working yet. Put some helium in. Yeah. I unclamp this. And here it's getting better. That's it for now. Uh, I think I can use the circuit to actually drive a Tesla coil, so maybe I'll make a part two to this where it's like a much bigger version. Maybe I'll hook up my guitar and I'll just sort of like make a real cool electric guitar, electric guitar thing. So yeah, please subscribe, stay tuned to that, and uh, take it easy, everybody.